Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. I'm Denise. I'm in front of the camera today instead of behind it. And I'm out in the greenhouse and I'm going to talk about some things that we're getting started now for spring bloom, but they'll grow through the winter. And we're going to share some tips and some of the varieties that we're going to get started and so stay tuned and follow along with me first off i'm getting started with my mini box they uh we were made uh, about a week ago they dried out and so i'm rehydrating them and as you can see they're nice and glistening which means they've taken up all the water I water, I put them in a pool of water underneath so that they pull it up naturally and I'm not watering them from over top to get them started faster. I just let them soak it up as they need. When I move down here, you can see that some of the things that we've got started already, this is stock. And as you can see, <laughs> I started it kind of early. The idea was I was hoping they would go in in the fall, but that didn't work out. And so we're going to plant them in um, this week and hopefully they will bloom next spring kind of early. They kind of got a little big and so I'm not sure this is going to work, but I'm also going to um, sow some more stock today. So if this didn't work, doesn't work, I'll have some backup. And a little further down, we have our winter um, dianthus, Sweet William. Um, I've got that started. It's going to go into um, one of our boxes, and we'll we have some other the other um, Sweet William that we did last year that looks fantastic in the box. So our experiment this week this year will be um, to see if they will bloom. So we'll have three boxes of Sweet William. Might be a lot, but it's such a popular flower for our florists and designers. Okay, this looks like a bunch of trays of soil. Not very interesting. But what it is, is it's our anemones. Uh, we did the uh, bubbling of them to get them plumped up. Only a couple of hours and they were nice and plump. Let them hang for a little bit to dry a little bit. And then we um, put a soil mix into our trays. And we're going to start them as if they were plugs. This is um, what we did before with our ranunculus. But now we're doing it with our anemones too. Because they have a tendency to rot in the crates when we plant them down there and we are tired of you know crates that are only half full so this is the plan for our anemones and we'll talk about that more when we get ready to plant them and we've got a lot of videos we've done on this already so that's a couple of the things that we got started here in the uh, greenhouse for next year and so let's talk about snaps this time of year, we grow what we call winter snapdragons. It means that they will not bloom in the winter, but they will grow vegetatively, lots of roots underneath, and um, slowly start to put a little bit of greenery on. And we start them anywhere from the mid-September to the end of September. Um, as seeds and our hope is to get them in the ground by first mid november to the end of november um and we're in zone 8b where the 45th parallel and so our day length um starts to really shorten by the um, end of november and the light intense and intensity <laughs> drops also um, then and doesn't come back up um, until about mid-February. 
um, where the days start to get a little longer and the light gets a little brighter. Um, so over the, this is our 19th season going to be coming up. So over all these years, we've been growing um, snapdragons. We have brought in all kinds of different varieties and we have determined which ones work the best for us in our context on our farm. Um, and their snapdragons we've learned over time are grouped in, uh, are, are in groups. One, one, two, 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 three, three, four, and as you, you know, going on. And um, the way they group them is based on optimal conditions, mainly meaning in a greenhouse where they can control the light and the water and the temperature. We don't have a greenhouse. I mean, this is it. You can't grow anything in here. We can only start stuff. But um, so ours are grown in the uh, hoop house this time of year. And it's unheated and we can, there's no light. So it's just going to grow as, excuse me, it's, it's going to grow, you know, very slowly but it'll establish a lot of roots. So over time, we've tried so many varieties and um, we have what we're looking for is nice long stems with long bloom heads that have plenty of blooms that will over a longer period of time will continue to open. And we've tried so many. And what we're looking for in this group, one, one, two, mostly one, two, and some twos that work best for our, our farm is we're looking for good, consistent, beautiful colors, um, long stems, like I said, and heads that are long, but don't snap off when you start to work with them, you know, when you trim them leaves or something and the head just goes flying or breaks where we don't like that. And so over time, snapdragons come in and they are discontinued. And um, one of our favorites was trumpet. They were a beautiful snapdragon that had all the characteristics that we were talking about just I just talked about um, and in a beautiful tangerine color and that one as far as I know I can't find it anywhere they still have the pink trumpet although it's not really I I've gotten some seed from England but it's not widely available here in the United States so my all-time favorite can't give anymore. So I've been looking and trying. And so what I've come up with is kind of when I'm going to show you what we have that we're going to start and tell you just a little bit about them. The first in the group one, two is Chantilly's, the open face, you know, no snapper, but an open face um, uh, bloom. And it's, it's a lovely snapdragon. Um, the colors are wonderful. It, it seed is hard to get anymore. And um, over time, this seed seems to be a little weak. The germination used to be extremely high, which is another thing that we're always looking for is a good 85 plus germination. And we were slowly over time getting, the, they were dropping into the 70s and the 60s. Nothing wrong with the Snapdragon if you can get it to go, get it to germinate and then get it to grow. It doesn't seem to put out a lot of second growth that is strong enough. The first stems are nice, but the second stems get more slender and smaller and that whip heads off kind of thing, you know, happens more and more. So, um, 
while we grow some, it's not going to be the big feature of next year for us. Um, I talked to my um, clients and they're okay with going with the next variety I'm going to tell you about. And the next variety is called the Cool Series. And this one meets all of our requirements. Nice long stems, no snap factor. Um, no, um, they don't need to be pinched because the second growth seems to come up on its own. If you pinch it, it gets a little spindlier and we don't like spindly flowers. Um, Beautiful color range, really long, nice heads, you know, with tips that just keep opening. And they're just great. They're just great. Um, they replaced the trumpets um, that are no longer available with us. And we're really okay with it. Um, they are traditional with the snapper. Um, and the colors they keep coming out with more and more colors than I understand. And so that's, that's a winner in our book. So we're going to be growing some cools. Um, also in the one, two is legend and it doesn't have as many color choices, uh, you know, as some of the others, but it was nice. We grew that for a couple of years, and then when the cools kind of came in, we kind of let the legend go. But it's a, it was a good Snapdragon, too. The next group is um, group two. Two. Um, is the animation series um, is part of that, and they are really hardy. Um, I'm not... 100% sure I, it was hard for me at the time we were growing those to find them in individual colors but um, we got a mix and uh, they did so well during <laughs> really bad snowstorm that we had one year where we couldn't cover them with frost blankets or anything like that and there they were in the tunnel you know looking wonderful <laughs> and it snowed all the way around it and they just hung in there and did really well um another group is called maryland and i have one or two of those that i'm going to put in today um they're a group two they do really well we also usually do some marylands on our second succession and i'll talk about that in a second and then final group that we've done before that works really well is called Overture. Overture. And it does really well as a group two. Uh, group two, three is another one that in our second, second, success, second succession ugh, um, that we do um, Monaco. Um, it takes it can still grow cool but it takes a little bit of warmth and it will be in a hoop house when we do that group and so it can take some of the extra heat that the hoop house is now starting to produce in like march and april and then the last group is group three and those are potomacs which we've grown in the past but we and are great super great however for our farm it's really hard to grow summer snapdragons. And so we have finally decided not to do that anymore. It's a waste of seed. So um, right now I will be seeding group one and two and some little bit of two. And then um, about the first of the year in January-ish, mid-January, I will sow the next succession of snapdragons that are group two and three, um, they will go into another hoop house and these ones will be able to take the heat, like I just said. And the idea is that when th these ones I'm sewing today um, are kind of finishing up, the other ones will just be starting. And so you've got a nice long time period of snapdragons 
And our goal is to have, hopefully, <laughs> these ones to start blooming sometime in late April, mid to late April, and through May. And then the second group will come in at late May into June. And then we usually, we're done with snaps by July. It's too hot. Is, and what we have a problem with here is rust and there's just no way to fight it part of the reason that rust comes up and gets all over your snapdragon leaves and blooms and stuff is really warm days and very cool nights which is what we have in the spring and it's endemic to our uh, grass that's around us so when we move to outdoors where it could be cooler it just gets all over everything and so it's just not worth it it's too too much work and we're not willing to fight it with all kinds of you know we don't do chemicals we're organic you know so it's just we look at snapdragons as a spring crop sometimes we will attempt a um fall crop if but that only works few times a season or a few times in all the seasons we've been doing this um, either it's too hot or um, mostly it's that it's too hot and they get stunted and not they don't grow very well and then it's always trying to find that perfect one that will be dialed in and although we think it's a two three <sighs> it doesn't always work and so I'm always looking for something else. You know, we've done glads as the spiky thing instead of snapdragons in the fall. So we're just looking at snapdragons as a spring crop. Um, in terms of success on, on all of this, I'm doing them in mini blocks. And I told, showed you a moment or these were completely dried out and I put them in a tray of water, not submerged them, just put them so that they could wick the water up because they're in an open bottom tray and, and um, slowly let them rehydrate. And that way I know that the whole um, block is, you know, moist, not drenched, but moist um so i'm doing these in mini blocks the success that we get from i always feel like I'm, if i say this i'm should knock on wood in the past our success on this is that we um always year-round store snapdragon seeds in our little fridge in the garage it doesn't get opened up very much it's in a sealed um, plastic tote and it it will come out only for seeding purposes and then it'll go right back in new seed is always best although i've been able to get some of these seeds you know that are a year or two old they'll probably do really well but i got one here that says it's 99 percent and it's two years old I don't think I'm going to get 99%, but if I get over 80, 85, I don't, I'll be happy. But um, new seed is always best. Um, uh, they will get, once I've seeded them, and I'm not going to go through that because I've showed you in the past seeding tons of times. So um, um, I'm not going to go over that, but kind of for snapdragons seeded in a tray um we uh, don't put it on a heat mat we'll pick they will go inside where i can maintain the consistency of about 68 to 70 degrees on my plants and in the house um under lights um no heat mat the unless there's some warmth from the heat of the other lights but there's it's not on a heat mat um 
and they won't be covered um, in terms of soil. No vermiculite, nothing. They'll just be there. And I'll put a humidity dome on them um, when I take them in and put them under the lights. I won't touch them. I won't water them. I won't do anything because the, so the blocks are going to be plenty moist and they should germinate in about six to seven days. At that point, I take the humidity dome off, maybe check to see if my blocks need any moisture from the bottom um, and um, just let them grow for on there for maybe a week and then they will come out here and they will get bumped up into um six, uh, into 72 plugs in a tray and sit here till they go um down to the crate house where they will acclimate themselves um get used to the temperatures and then we'll get them planted in the hoop house. In the hoop house, they grow cool. Like I said, no heat or anything like that. They'll grow cool in there. We'll have frost blankets in the, on the hoops in case we have a crazy cold night. But um, most a uh, good chunk of the time, we don't cover them. <laughs> and they seem to just do well in the cool. And uh, let's see, I think that's everything that that makes it us have success. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things that um, I've discovered is the new um, company Ball Ball Hort Horticulture. Um, I ordered some um, Snapdragon seeds from them, and. As you see, I have to wear glasses in general, reading glasses. To seed snapdragons is a leap of faith. I can't see them, but I can see that on my little tooth, my little um, popsicle stick, I've honed it down to a point. I can see if it's still there that I didn't get it on the soil block. But Ball now has them pelleted. On these cool ones, they're pelleted, which I can see that. And so I'm going to be doing orange bicolor, cool, and cool rose, and cool pink. That's what I'm going to offer this year in the cool series. I also have a little bit of salmon left from and I didn't order one of those um, to, in pellet. I'm gonna finish up maybe with a little bit of um, salmon and I'll show you some pictures that we had of the cool rose and the salmon growing that, so you get an idea of what they look like. Um, the next one I'm gonna grow is one of those Maryland ones, which is a group two. We've done this one in the past and it's been really successful and it's Maryland orange. And I got this from Pan American Seed. And another one we're gonna grow that's in the Maryland, Maryland one is called Lavender. Maryland Lavender. Beautiful, light, dusty, lavender um, that I got from Geo that is a beautiful uh, snapdragon. And then two that I am got in the Costa series, which are um, group twos that we've grown in the past is the Costa apricot from Johnny's. It is so beautiful, multi-toned, kind of pink, uh, kind of white with some yellow, with some orange. Is I'll show another picture of that one. And then I got one called Costa Silver, and I, this is kind of a new new one for us. And so I'm going to give that one a try because that Costa Apricot was so awesome, and I may as well. I just want to try it. And then the last group, the uh, last one that I'm going to um, show is um, 
I'm going to grow red Delilah. And I've grown red Delilah in the past as a fall one because it's red with all this white throat. It is so pretty. And, but it's reddish, dark. And um, I always thought, eh, it looks probably better with fall colors and stuff. And chatting with my customers, they like it a lot. And so they said, yeah, give it a try for uh, late spring uh, and spring in late spring. Um, because they can always use that color in very colorful bouquets that they're making. So those are the varieties that I'm going to work on um, today getting seeded. And then after I seed those, I'm going to do another round of stock. And I'm not sure about those. Um, so I think I've covered everything that I wanted to say. This is all... You know, these are greenhouses for seeing snapdragons in the different groups. And you just have to kind of play around with what works in your farm context. You know, what what are you looking for for the end person? You know, you're either you're selling bouquets yourself or selling to a florist or designer. You know, you got to find what works and what you like. You know, the... Um, you know, if you want to grow Chantillys, you can year round, but for us on our farm, the Chantillys get really spindly in the summer and they snap and they're just not fitting into what we're looking for in terms of consistency. So um, that's why we I've kind of moved to these and I've added like I'm going to the silver and the uh, red Delilah are going to be new. So um, that'll be a surprise for our customers on <laughs> that. Um, so um, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to say about it. So thank you for joining me here in the greenhouse as we talk about seeding and Maybe in the future, I will do some more talks on different things that we're seeding. So you take care and stay safe out there. And one of us you'll see soon in our next video. So thank you. Bye.